So this is going to be a quick video showing the install process for CP4i in 2021.1. Um, I'm going to start with a fresh OpenShift container platform cluster. This one's um, 4.7. And I'm going to install CP4i operators to make CP4i available on the cluster. And then I'm going to create a new instance of CP4i and we can start doing some integration work. So I'm going to do this um, real time, but when there's a few longer jobs and boring bits, I'm going to speed the video up. So I'll start a little timer in the corner of the screen so that when I cut and cheat on the video, you'll know how long I sat and waited staring at the screen. So let's log in. So this is a, a new cluster. Um, I haven't got anything installed other than the IBM operator catalog, and I've set up my entitlement keys. Um, don't let me uh, get to the protected IBM content. So I've got a, an automation platform project with no operators in it right now. So let's go to Operator Hub and let's go find the CP4i operators. I'll filter by CP4i, Cloud Pack for integration would also work. Um, and these are all the operators that are available. All of the different products, API Connect, App Connect, MQ, Event Streams, Data Power. But there's also uh, an IBM Cloud Pack for integration. This is going to install the entire platform in one go. Um, this is going to pull in all of the other operators as necessary and make all of those integration features available on the cluster. So let's choose that one. I'll install it cluster-wide. You can install it in a single namespace if you, if you prefer. Now this is going to go and pull in a whole bunch of other operators. So this is going to take, um, this is going to take a few minutes. Um, so uh, at this point, I'll, uh, I'll I'll pause and, and speed up the video so that you don't have to sit and watch this for as long as I do. Okay, so that's all done now. The timer, as you see, has, has jumped to, to seven minutes. I've now got all of my operators installed. I'm going to go create an instance of the platform navigator now in, uh, in my automation platform project. So I'll click Create Platform Navigator. I'm going to accept the license. And then I'm going to give it a, a read, write, many storage class that's uh, necessary for the, for the landing page of the, of the Navigator. And there we go. That's all I need to do. So I'll just hit Create. Now, this step's going to take maybe 30 minutes, something like that. So um, rather than sit here and stare at the screen, we'll, we'll cut the video there and I'll pick up the narration once that condition uh, switches green um, and becomes ready. And there it goes. Um, it's just become ready. Um, we've uh, waited 23 minutes, just enough time for a cup of tea or coffee. Now I can click on uh, integration quick start and I can see my platform navigator UI link over there. If I click on that, at the minute it's got self signed certificates. There are details in uh, our IBM documentation site about how to update those for real ones but I'll just click through those for now and it'll take me to my uh, single sign-on login page. Now I can configure this to use my corporate LDAP if I wish, but in this case, I'm just gonna carry on using the same default cube admin credentials that, uh, that I've been using so far throughout the cluster. And then that'll sign me in and it'll take me to the brand new homepage for CP4i in 2021.1. Um, this page here is bringing together all of the different capabilities um, in this instance of CP4i and surfacing that, that important information in this sort of landing page, a sort of overview of what's happening in your cluster. What instances do I have available? Can I do some user management, install some more operators, see my capabilities? Um, and I can also jump out to the Cloudback Administration Hub through the nine dot switcher there in the top right. And I've got this common menu on the left. I'm going to go to integration runtimes here and, and show how we can then start to create some integration capabilities. If I click integration runtimes, it's going to take me to a new page. And this is going to look familiar to previous versions of CP4i. It's going to show me all of my integration runtimes and their status and their versions, whether there are upgrades available and things. And from here, I can create a new runtime. Um, I'm going to choose messaging. And we're going to launch into the same experience that we had for creating messaging runtimes in 2020.4 and previous releases. 
I'll choose Quick Start. I'm going to pick a namespace here. Um, if this was a single namespace instance, you wouldn't need to choose a namespace. That would be uh, be obvious. In this case, I install cluster wide, so um, I get a choice of namespace here. So I'm going to pick Automation Platform, and then all I need to do is give it a name and accept the license. There's lots more options available down here, but that's all I need to do for for now. Now that's going to take me back to my page. It's going to start provisioning that instance. Um, once that's ready, um, that status pending is going to tick over to ready. Um, and I'll be able to start using my key manager. At that point, I'm going to take a pause because this might take maybe five, ten minutes or so. Um, and so we'll come back when that's complete. Here it is. Um, it's just refreshing because it's realized that my key manager is now ready. Um, and now you see that the name has become a link. I can click that link and I'm going to launch straight into my key manager UI. Again, this is all single sign on, so I don't need to sign in again. It already knows who I am and it's going to stay within that same common navigation. We're going to have the same header, the same options all available, but I'm going to be in my uh, uh, key manager UI. I'm now inside my key manager UI and I'm ready to start building my first messaging project from scratch in around about 40 minutes. So that's very cool. Now, if I head back to my um, homepage and you can see that my new messaging instance shows up on my, um, on my homepage there. So I've got nice, quick, easy access to my key manager. And from here, I can go start building out any other integration capabilities that I need for my solution. There we go. That was um, uh, a full end-to-end -end install process for CP4i 2021.1. Thank you.